Hello students, welcome to Vyas Edification Quota. In this series of NCRT discussion, it is time to continue further with Mathematics Class 11th and we are dealing with the chapter straight lines. It is time to deal with the miscellaneous exercise and miscellaneous exercise as, as we all know has questions from all the concepts covered in the chapter and some very interesting questions have been covered in this particular exercise over here of this chapter number 10 straight lines. So let's begin with the first question and understand the concepts along with discussion of the solutions. Let's begin with the first one. The first question says find the values of k for which the line this okay the line is given in terms of a parameter k and we are supposed to find the values of k for which the line is parallel to x-axis parallel to y-axis or passing to the origin. Now, let's see, let's see, how will we solve this one? So, for solving this question, what are we supposed to do? What does a line parallel to x-axis look like? What does a line parallel to the x-axis look like? Let's take a look at that line first of all. A line which is parallel to the x-axis, this kind of a line, will have equation y is equal to a, something of this sort, right? If you observe, coefficient of x is there any term of x in this? No. Coefficient of x is simply 0. That's the condition which we can simply apply to get a line parallel to the x-axis. Right. Similarly, for a line parallel to the y-axis, this is x-axis, this is y-axis, this is origin. For a line parallel to x-axis, the equation will be x equal to b of this sort. Right. And if you observe, if you observe, right, if you compare this with ax plus by plus c equals 0, a general equation of a straight line, you observe that yes, there is a term of x, yes, there is a constant term, but there is no term of y implies that coefficient of y is simply 0. This is what you can observe. That is something which you can observe, right? Another thing, we are supposed to find line passing through the origin. If a line passes through origin, it will be look like this, right? So, it will pass through the point 0, 0. Okay, if the line passes through the point 0, 0, what happens to the equation? If you observe, this is 0, this is 0, therefore this also becomes 0. That is constant term, you can directly say that constant term is equal to 0. The line, the equation of the line will look like this, y is equal to mx. We have derived this equation in one of the exercises, one of the questions of exercises, that line passing through origin having slope m looks like this, y is equal to mx. Right, so here the constant term is 0. For line parallel to x-axis, coefficient of x is 0. For line parallel to the y-axis, coefficient of y is 0. These are the conditions that you can apply. Can you use any other approach as well? Yes, for lines parallel to the x-axis, you can also say that the slope of the line is 0. That's another idea which you can follow. That slope of the line is 0. And in this case, you can say that um, slope is not defined for that matter. Right. So, therein the condition will be slightly, slightly difficult, that's it. But, the, but at the end of the day, you will get the same condition using that approach, the idea of slope also. Okay. So, let's apply these conditions one by one. For part A, what do we need? Line parallel to the x-axis. Okay. The equation of line is k minus 3. Just a minute. Let's get rid of this. Let's first write the equation of line. We have k minus 3 times x, okay, minus 4 minus k square times y and plus k square minus 7k plus 6 is equal to 0. Now, for part A, what do we need? Line is parallel to x-axis. If the line is parallel to x-axis, therefore, coefficient of x will be 0. Implies k minus 3 equals 0, which tells me that k will be equal to 3. That's the answer for this part A. Right? A simple approach, yes. Next, for B, what do we have? We want line parallel to the y-axis. For line parallel to the y-axis, this is equation. Therefore, coefficient of y will be 0. Okay. Coefficient of y equals 0. And that tells me that okay, 4 minus k square will be 0. Or that tells me k square equals 4 which gives me k equals plus or minus 2. There are two possible values of k plus 2 or minus 2. What about part c? For the part c, for a line passing through the origin, we can simply say that constant term will be 0. If constant term is 0, which is the, what is the constant term over here? This is the constant term. So, that tells me that k square minus 7k plus 6 is equal to 0. If you observe, the roots are 
one of the root as one other is six k equals one and k is equal to six those are the possible values this is the answer for the third part this is the answer for the second part and that's the complete solution of this first question over here the second question says find the values of theta and p if the equation this x cos theta plus y sin theta equal to p is the normal form of the line this okay so we are interested in theta and p basically we are interested in writing this equation in the normal form mate idea is that okay and how do we write the equation in a normal form what does normal form represent how what does normal form look like for that matter normal form for any line will be this if this angle from the positive x axis okay if you draw perpendicular from the origin first thing if you draw perpendicular from the origin the length of the perpendicular is p and the angle the uh, perpendicular makes with the positive x axis is alpha then equation of the line will be x cos alpha y sin alpha is equal to p so person has given p in place of p but instead of alpha the person has mentioned theta over here Never mind, we can find alpha, which is same as theta, right? And for converting any general random equation of straight line in the form, in the form this, what do we do? If you have ax plus by plus c equals z equals zero, you take the c on the right hand side, okay? This becomes minus c, and then you divide. This becomes ax plus by equals minus c. Please observe the coefficients are cos alpha and sin alpha, and for ensuring that. The sums of squares is equal to one for these two. You divide with under root of a square plus b square. What is that? Where does this come from? This is a and b. We square them, add them, and take the root and divide both sides by this same quantity. When we divide both sides by this same quantity, the next thing that remains is to convert this whole expression. This whole expression, since p is greater than zero over here, convert this whole expression in a positive sign. Positive. And after that, you can easily guess the value of alpha with the help of cos alpha and sin alpha, right? Alpha belongs to zero comma two pi, open at two pi and closed at zero. That's the important thing, right? So this is the approach that we follow for converting any equation in the normal form. Let's take a look at this one. This is root three x plus y plus two equals zero. The first thing that I'll do is I'll take the two on the right hand side. This becomes root three x. Plus y equals minus two. Okay. Next, next what I'll do is root three square plus one square is equal to what? And the under root is equal to under root of four, which is simply two. So since a square plus b square is four and under root of a square plus b square is two, so what I'll do is I'll divide by two over here and I'll divide by two over here. This becomes okay. Convert this into a positive sign. So for that, let's write this first. One by two y is equal to minus one. Now make this positive. So multiply with a minus throughout, and what you see is minus square root of three by two x plus minus one by two y is equal to one. Now at this stage, you realize that you are aware of three things. What are the three things? First thing is p. Keep, the value of p is one. The second thing is cos alpha. Or for that matter, in this question, cos theta. In this question, cos theta. That's something which you can observe. Cos theta is minus square root of three by two. Sine theta, as you can observe, is minus one by two. Right? These are a few things that you can observe over here. Once you note these things, can you find the value of p has been found? But can you find the value of theta as well? Since we were asked to find the value of theta and p, we have found p. Yes. Can you find theta? If you observe, cos theta and sine theta both are negative. Okay, so theta will lie in the in the third quadrant. Yes, cos theta and sine theta both are negative, so theta will lie in the third quadrant. Applying concepts of applying concepts of trigonometric equations, you can say, okay, sine theta equals to half tells me that uh, sine theta equals to half tells me that theta will be pi by six. Okay, and when we talk about the third quadrant, you'll have to go pi plus pi by six, basically this particular angle. So sine theta is equal to minus half will tell me that theta equals Pi plus pi by six. Therefore, theta is equal to pi. Using trigonometric equations, you can say this is pi plus pi by six. This is what you observe, right? Okay. And uh, what is this angle? This is pi plus pi by six, which is seven pi by six. Or in other words, you can say this is two one zero degree. Okay. 
So theta has been found, yes, and P was already found before this, P equals 1. That is the answer, right, for this particular question, 7 pi or by 6 or 210 degree. You can convert that into degrees also if you want. That is the final answer for this question, as you can see over here. The third question talks about, find the equations of lines which cut off intercepts on the axis whose sum and product are 1 and minus 6 respectively. Okay, so you are supposed to find equations, okay. That means that there will be one more than one line. That's what you can guess from here. But when we talk about intercepts, the form of straight line that we would like to observe is, we would like to consider is the intercept form. What does the intercept form say? If this is a comma 0, the x intercept is a, if this is b, 0 comma b, the y intercept is b, then equation of the line is x upon a plus y upon b is equal to 1. So if you want to find the equation of the line, we can find a and b and get the equation easily, right? There are some conditions given on the intercepts, right? Equations of the lines which cut off intercepts on the axis whose sum and product are 1 and minus 6. So sum is 1 and product is minus 6. Oh, that looks pretty simple, right? We get one, two equations and two unknowns and we can easily solve for the two unknowns. Yes, get the values of A and B and therefore get the lines, right? Let's see, let's see. This is equation number 1, this is equation number 2. Let's use the value of B from here, that is 1 minus A in this equation and see where does that take us, okay? This gives me A minus A square is equal to minus 6 which tells me a square minus a minus 6 is equal to 0. Now, minus 6 can be factorized as minus 3 and 2, right? So, we can split this as a square minus 3a plus 2a minus 6 is equal to 0, okay? You can take out a common, a minus 3 remains, you can take out a com 2 common, a minus 3 remains. So, a minus 3 will come out common and a plus 2 comes out common, this is equal to 0. This tells me a equals 3 or a equals minus 2. These are two possible values of A. If you get A, can you also find B? Yes. So, A equals 3 implies B equals what? So, for B implies B equals, you can apply A plus B equals 1 or the product AB is equal to minus 6. So, B is simply 1 minus A. That is what you can observe from the first equation. B is 1 minus A. 1 minus a is equal to minus 2. This will tell me the value of b, okay? a equals 3 gives me b equals minus 2 or a equals minus 2 will give me b equals 1 minus a which tells me b equals 3. So, a equals minus 2 implies b equals to 3, okay? These are the two possibilities that we are getting. In this case, equation will become, what will the equation look like? The equation will look like this, x upon 3 plus y upon minus 2 is equal to 1. This is what the equation will look like, right? So, uh, you can leave the equation at this stage or maybe take the LCM. For taking the LCM, the LCM will be actually 6. So, why not multiply by 6 directly throughout? So, I multiply by 6, this becomes 2x minus 3y is equal to 6. That's the answer for this part. Or or you can get the equation from here as well. Equation will be x by minus 2 plus y by 3 is equal to 1. Again, if you observe, the LCM will be 6. So, you can multiply by 6. Or to make the coefficient of x positive, can we multiply with minus 6 as well? Yes, maybe minus 6. So, what do we have? This is 3x multiplying by minus 6. Maybe. This is 3x minus 2y is equal to minus 6 or you can write it as 3x minus 2y plus 6 equals 0. That's the answer. This or this is the final answer for this particular third question for which sum of intercepts and product of intercepts are given, right? That's a complete solution for this third question. The fourth question says, what are the points on the y-axis whose distance from the line this is 4 units? Points on the y-axis whose distance from the line this is 4 units. So, what do the points on the y-axis look like? And what is the formula of distance of a point from a line? Those are two important things that we'll need over here. So, any point on the y-axis, any point on the y-axis will look like 0, 
k you can say right the x coordinate will be 0 since this is the origin this is x axis this is y axis any point here will look like this right the x coordinate of that particular point will be 0 okay the next thing that I'll need is for any line ax plus by plus c equals 0 if you want to find the distance of q x1 comma y1 from this particular point d will be equal to a x1 plus b y1 plus c upon under root of a square plus b square and you take a modulus this is what the distance looks like right those are two formulae which will be useful in this case right what does the person say the person says what are the points on the y axis whose distance from the line okay distance is given as four units okay so point let p 0 comma k is the required point okay and distance distance from p is equal to 4 implies distance from p of this particular line so we can substitute this point over here and see where does that take us so let's write the equation of line and see this is 0 upon 3 plus k upon 4 minus 1 upon under root of 1 coefficient is 1 by 3 right square it and it will give you 1 by 9 coefficient is 1 by 4 which will be 1 by 16 you take the modulus this modulus is equal to 4 right? that's what I get is that okay yes. seems okay so after this the next step will be to simply apply this equation so this is 0 this is k by 4 minus 1 and its modulus which is equal to what 4 times this under root this is positive this will go on the right hand side this is it and 16 plus 9 is 25 in the numerator you have 9 and 16 the product on the denominator what is this simplify into this is 5 3 4 and 4 will get cancelled this is 5 by 3 actually right and the value of k by 4 minus 1 modulus is equal to this therefore k by 4 minus 1 is equal to 5 by 3 or k by 4 minus 1 is equal to minus 5 by 3 that's what I get right this is what I get let's find the value of k from here k by 4 will be equal to 5 by 3 plus 1 which is 8 by 3 and this tells me k equals 32 by 3 or let's solve for the other value of k and where does that take me k by 4 is equal to 1 minus 5 by 3 which is minus 2 by 3 and this tells me k will be equal to minus 8 by 3 so there are this or this there are two possible values of k and that's my answer for this question as you can see over here right that's a complete solution and we required these two ideas so far solving this question the fifth question says find perpendicular distance from the origin to the line joining the points this and this okay there's a line joining the points this and this and we are supposed to find the perpendicular distance from origin okay the perpendicular distance from origin will not be difficult but first we have to find the equation of the line joining these two points right so let's go ahead and do it for writing the equation of line we are given two points so let's use the two point form now what does the two point form look like equation of line in two point form will be y minus y1 is equal to y2 minus y1 upon x2 minus x1 times x minus x1 this is the form which we are interested in right so let's write this y minus y1 which is sine theta is equal to y2 minus y1 which is sine phi minus sine theta upon cos phi minus cos theta okay and this is x minus cos theta this is what you have is that okay yes that's the equation of line yes that is the equation of line in one way but can we simplify this further somehow yes maybe we can simplify this in a particular way what is that this is sin c minus sin d okay do you see sin c minus sin d yes can i apply concepts of trigonometry over here yes transformation of sum or difference into product maybe yes so what is sin c minus sin d equal to let me write the formula somewhere let us use this particular space for writing the formula of sin c minus sin d and cos c minus cos d so sin c let's see sin c minus sin d is equal to 2 cos c plus d by 2 cos sorry sin c minus d by 2 this is what you get right 2 cos c plus d by 2 sin c minus d by 2 
what about cos c minus cos d this is equal to minus 2 sin c plus d by 2 sin c minus d by 2 so using these formula using these formula you can maybe transform this complicated expression into a simpler expression yes so sin phi minus sin theta sin phi minus sin theta will be 2 cos theta plus phi plus theta by 2 phi minus theta by 2 okay and similarly this term will be this and you observe that sin c minus d by 2 sin c minus d by 2 will get cancelled right twos will also get cancelled and what will remain is simply cos of theta plus phi sorry theta plus phi by 2 this is what will remain in a numerator in the denominator you will get minus of sin theta plus phi by 2 right using that formula i am directly writing this okay you can write the middle step as well but this is what you get and with this you get x minus cos theta okay and this here is y minus sin theta let's simplify a bit further a bit further and bring this expression over here so what do you get y times with a minus sine of theta plus phi by 2 okay and this becomes plus sine theta sine of theta plus phi by 2 what else on the right hand side you get x times cos of theta plus phi by 2 okay and you can multiply this and get another term over here and what is that this is minus cos theta times cos of theta plus phi by 2 do you observe this yes oh, this expression looks pretty long yes this expression looks pretty long but you can bring that y over here and take this term over there to simplify it further what does it look like after simplification let's take a look at this one after simplification this will finally convert to let's bring everything on the y term on this side and take this cos theta term over there so x cos theta plus phi by 2 is what i have over here plus y sin theta plus phi by 2 is the other thing that i have over here and this is equal to do you observe cos theta cos a cos b plus sin a sin b is what i have over here yes do you observe that if i take this over there this becomes cos a cos b plus sin a sin b form what is that equal to that is cos of this is cos a cos b plus sin a sin b that becomes cos of a minus b okay so i can write it as cos of a minus b this minus this or this minus this whichever is okay so theta minus theta by 2 will be theta by 2 minus phi by 2 this is theta minus phi by 2 that's what i get right that's the required equation for that line passing through the two points okay now we have seen the two point form of solving this particular equation and with the help of that we have obtained this equation i'll explain one more form before we conclude this question but let's solve the question further first what do we have find perpendicular distance from the origin to the line joining the points this and this the work is not yet complete after finding this equation we have to find the distance from origin so distance from origin will be equal to you substitute a zero you substitute a zero zero plus zero minus cos of theta minus phi by two and in the denominator you have this square plus this square under root cos of some angle sine of same angle square and added will give me one and this is what you get so this becomes distance from the origin as actually equal to cos of theta minus phi by two and you have a modulus don't forget that that's my answer for this question okay find perpendicular distance this is the perpendicular distance of finding this right that's the solution of this question that's a complete solution yes but one important thing remains and i'll explain this particular equation in another way if you can handle that much so what does that solution look like let's take a look at that the other approach so the important thing for us over here is this that if we have if you have the points cos theta comma sin theta and cos phi you have this point cos phi comma sin phi is the other point right what do these points look like what do, what do these points have in common do you remember do you remember studying trigonometry and in trigonometry we uh, saw these kind of points right these kind of points lied on something called a unit circle this is what a unit circle look like 
this is the radius, this is minus 1, this is 1, this is minus 1 and if this angle is theta, then this point P will be cos theta, comma sin theta. Okay, and similarly, similarly, if we have another angle phi, then this particular point Q becomes this, right? That is something which we had from there. Okay, we'll borrow that concept first of all. And once we borrow that concept, see where does that take us? So once you have borrowed this concept, let me draw a bigger circle and see where does that take me? Okay, this is x axis, this is y axis, okay. And this is a point P which has, which is making an angle theta over here. Okay, this is point P. Then there's another point Q which is making angle phi. This total angle is phi, right? Yes. Okay. And if you want to find the equation of this PQ, extended basically, if you find want to find the equation of this PQ, what can you do? <sighs> Observe carefully. Right, this is unit circle, this is also unit circle. And if you know, maybe if you can somehow find this perpendicular distance. If you can find this perpendicular distance directly somehow, then you can write the equation as well in terms of normal form. What does the normal form look like? X cos alpha plus Y sin alpha is equal to P. This is what the normal form looks like. Yes. So for normal form, we need this to distance P and this angle over here. Okay, and how do we get those angles and distances? Please observe, please observe. This is one unit. Yes, if I can somehow find this angle over here, I'll be able to add theta and get the complete angle of alpha. And I'll also be used able to use this triangle, this right angle triangle over here with this hypotenuse to get P easily, right? Okay, so let's do that and see where does that give me. So this difference of the two angles, let's take a look at the difference of the two angles, this angle, what is this angle equal to? This angle is equal to, since the total is phi and this is theta, this here is theta, this is phi, so this angle will be phi minus theta, that blue angle will be phi minus theta. Yes, okay, and half of that is this orange angle, and yes, this orange angle will be phi minus theta by 2. This is what I observe. Yes. Okay, so what will alpha be equal to? Alpha will be equal to this angle orange one plus this yellow theta. So this is theta plus this phi minus theta by 2. And this actually becomes phi plus theta by 2. Okay, so you have found alpha, right? Once you have found alpha, you can, can you also find this particular distance P with the help of this right angle triangle over here? Yes, maybe we can do that. Let's try to apply that right angle triangle idea and see where does that take us? This is one, this is P and this particular angle is that orange angle, phi minus theta by two. So this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse. What we'll be using is cos theta. So P upon 1 is equal to cos of this angle over here. What is that? Phi minus theta by 2. So that tells me P equals cos of phi minus theta by 2. And this value can be positive or negative. But since P is the distance, yes, we'll have to take the modulus of this. Depending upon the values of theta and phi, this can be a positive or negative. So take a modulus over there and this is what it looks like. Oh, we have found the perpendicular distance directly over here. Yes, we have found the perpendicular distance directly over here. That was a question which, that was the result you obtained in the question, actual solution over there. But yes, with the help of this P and this alpha, I can also write the equation. And do you observe x cos theta plus phi by 2 plus y sin theta plus phi by 2 is equal to cos of theta minus phi by 2 is what you obtained over there as the equation. Right or not? Yes, that was the equation that you obtained over over there in the solution, right? Let's take a look at that again. And yes, this was the equation of the line and this is the final distance that was required for that equation. Yes, that's the complete solution and we have seen another approach for getting the same result for this fifth question. You can take a look at this complete solution. 
Let's talk about the sixth question which says find the equation of the line parallel to y axis an equation of line parallel to y axis and drawn to the point of intersection of the lines this and this. Okay. So what do we do? We have two lines. Okay. One of the lines is x minus 7y plus 5 is equal to 0. This is not drawn to scale, right? The other line is 3x plus y equals 0. If you can find this point P, then x axis will be horizontal, y axis will be vertical. The y, the line parallel to y axis will look like this, right? Equation of line parallel to the y axis, okay? If this point is alpha comma beta, then the equation of line parallel to the y axis will be x equals alpha. Right. This is the equation we are we are trying to find over here. Okay, so the target is to find alpha and beta, or precisely only to find alpha for that matter, right? So let's find the value of alpha, that is x coordinate, by eliminating y. Y equals to minus 3x. This tells me that x minus 7 minus 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. This tells me x plus 21x is equal to minus 5 which gives me x equals minus 5 upon 22. This is the x coordinate of that particular point alpha comma beta and once you have obtained the x coordinate yes therefore equation equation of line parallel to y axis passing through point of intersection of this and this is x equals minus 5 by 22. That's the answer for this question with the help of simple analysis as you can see over here. The sixth question for us. The seventh question says find the equation of a line drawn perpendicular to the line this through the point where it meets the y-axis. Oh, this is given in terms of intercept form, yes? And x-intercept is 4, y-intercept is 6. We can easily write the x-intercept and y-intercept. x-intercept is the point where the line meets the x-axis, y-intercept is the point where the line meets the y axis yes that's what the person is talking about so let's draw the actual diagram no rough sketches this time this is the actual diagram this point is 4 this point is 6 okay x intercept is 4 y intercept is 6 this is the line x by 4 plus y by 6 is equal to 1 now find the equation of a line drawn perpendicular to the line this through the point where it meets the y-axis. So, which line are you looking forward to? Now, we are looking forward to this particular line over here, which is perpendicular to this line at this particular point. Okay, this particular point is 0, 6. Let's call this B. This particular point is 4, 0. Let's call this A. And we are actually looking forward to this particular line, L. Finding the equation of this particular line. So, for L, what all do we know? So, we know that this L is passing through this particular point 0 comma 6 that's one of the conditions and the other condition is given in terms of slope if this slope is m2 this slope is m1 then we know that m1 times m2 is equal to minus 1 and what is m1 is equal to what is m1 equal to first of all let's take a look at the value of m1 from this equation of line so for finding m1 let's write the line in terms of point slope form although you can use another idea what is that minus coefficient of x upon coefficient of y that is also there but let's use the general approach x by 4 plus y by 6 equals 1 gives me y by 6 is equal to minus x by 4 plus 1 which tells me x equals multiply by 6 this becomes minus 3 by 2 x plus 6 okay this is not x this is actually y y equals this therefore m1 is equal to minus 3 by 2 which tells me m2 will be equal to 2 by 3 the slope of line l is 2 by 3 and it passes through the point 0 comma 6 that's what i can guess over there and since it passes through the point and point is 0 comma 6 so let's use the point slope form what is that equation of l can be written in point slope form which is y minus y1 m times x minus x1 this is the form that i can use what does this form tell me y minus 6 is equal to slope 2 by 3 times x minus 0 this is what you have or y equals 2 by 3x plus 6 in the form y is equal to mx plus c 
You can directly observe that if you get the slope, this is nothing but y is equal to mx plus c form. And yes, that's the answer in that particular form of this required line, the equation of the required line. This is the seventh question for us. The eighth question says, find the area of triangle formed by the lines this, this and this. Okay. Now, how do you find the area of this triangle? So, if you are given the vertices, you can find the area of triangle using simple expression half times x1 times y2 minus y3 plus x, x2 times y3 minus y1 plus x3 times y1 minus y3. That's what you do, right? So, the x3 times y1 minus y2, right? Last term. But uh, here we are given lines, right? So, let's see where do these lines take us. Do we get the points easily or do we get the area easily? Where does that take us? So, y minus x equal to 0 is this line. Passing through the origin, this is y is equal to x only. Right? x plus y equal to 0 is actually y equal to minus x, which is this line. Okay. This is x plus y equals 0. Other line is x equal to k. Okay. Now, k can be positive or negative. If positive this is what the line looks like x minus k is equal to 0 if k would have been negative k, the line would be here but for calculating area k positive or negative will not impact much right so let's consider without loss of generality that k is positive in this case and if you want to find the area of this triangle do you observe that it is very very easy and very very simple what are we supposed to do we can easily find these points this is 0 comma 0 which is very simple for this the value of for this particular point the value of x is k and the value of y will also be k for this the value of x is k the value of y will be minus k yes this is origin o let's call this a let's call this b area of triangle o a b can be done as half base into height what is the base? Can I take this AB as the base and this may be OC as the height? Yes, I can do that. Half times AB is the base and AB distance and OC distance is the height. What about this point C? This is on the x-axis. This point is actually K comma 0. Right? This is what you have. So, this becomes half is OK. Distance of AB is actually 2K. This is 2K. But you'll have to take the modulus because k could be negative as well, right? And distance OC. OC is once again k square under root which is modulus of k. So, this simply becomes half times 2 goes and this is k square in a modulus or simply k square. This is area of triangle OAB and yes, that is the answer for this question as you can see over here. Right. One more important thing to observe in this particular question is do you realize that this particular angle is 45 degree because this line pi is equal to x has slope for 1. So, inclination will be 45 degree. Similarly, this particular angle over here is also 45 degree which makes this triangle a right angle triangle over here. At the origin, you get a right angle, right? So, you can also find area by finding OA and OB which will be same lens, right? This is an isosceles right angle triangle. That's what you observe in this question. Right. And is there any other approach? Yes, you can use the ladder method as well by using the coordinates since we have found the coordinates or you can use the long approach of writing half times x1 multiplied by y2 minus y3, x2 multiplied by y3 minus y1 plus x3 multiplied by y1 minus y2, add them together, multiply by half and in the end take the absolute value. You can also do that. So this is a simple approach and this is how you can get the answer easily for this question as you can see over here. The ninth question says, find the value of P so that the three lines, 3x plus y minus 2 equal to 0, px plus 2y minus 3 equal to 0 and 2x minus y minus 3 equal to 0 may intersect at one point. Okay. So, if you observe carefully, this line has variable P. These two lines do not have any variable P. Yes. So, if they in may intersect at that at one point, then we can simply say that find the points of intersection of these two lines. That is something you can find easily, right? And after that, pass this particular line through that point. You get the value of P. Yes, that's pretty simple. And we'll use this idea only. So, 3x 
plus y minus 2 equals 0. This is equation number 1. Then you have px plus 2y minus 3 equals 0. This is equation number 2. And 2x minus y minus 3 equals 0. This is equation number 3. Let's forget about 2 and let's solve equations 1 and 3 first. So solving 1 and 3, what do we get? 1 and 3. How do we solve 1 and 3? If you observe, this is plus y, this is minus y. You can eliminate y easily, yes. So let's add 1 and 3. This results me 5x minus 5 is equal to 0, x is equal to 1. And if x equals to 1, therefore, using equation number 1 or 2, equation 1 gives me 3 times 1 plus y minus 2 is equal to 0. Or it tells me y equals to minus 3, which is minus 1. Okay. So, point of intersection of 1 and 3 is 1 comma minus 1. Point of intersection 1 comma minus 1. And if this particular point also lies on that line, then it is done, right? That second line, this second line should pass through this. Therefore, 2 should pass through this point since we have a common point of intersection comma minus 1. Therefore, what do we have? P times 1 plus 2 times minus 1 minus 3 equals 0 which tells me P equals minus 2 and minus 3 will go over there. This is 5. And yes, that's the answer for this ninth question as you can see behind me. Right? That's the complete solution of this question. The tenth question says if three lines whose equations are y is equal to m1 x plus c1 y equals m2 x plus c2 and y equals m3 x plus c3 are concurrent. Okay, if these three lines are concurrent, concurrency means, okay, these lines intersect at one particular point. Then show that m1 times c2 minus c3 plus m2 times c3 minus c1 plus m3 times c1 minus c2 is equal to 0. Now, how do we deal with this one? <laughs> how do we deal with this one? If three lines whose equations are this, this, this are concurrent. So, concurrency implies that point of intersection of any two lines will lie on the third line. That's the aim and that's the way in which we'll be approaching this question. Although for those students who are aware of something called determinants, you'll be able to solve this question maybe more directly. What you can do is simply uh, write the coefficients a1, b1, c1, a2, b2, c2, a3, b3, c3, create a determinant 3 by 3 determinant equals equated to 0. You will get that condition directly. But here, here, I am assuming that uh, since we are discussing 11th and we have only studied, you have only studied 11th. So, we will be using, we will be solving this question from the basic concepts, right? That is, we will solve 1 and 2, get the point of intersection and then satisfy that point on this third line. A similar thing which we do, did in the ninth question, right? Okay, so let's solve these two equations, okay? Eliminating y is pretty simple, right? What we can do is solving 1 and 2. Where does that take me? So what I can do is simply subtract. And that tells me 0 equals m1 minus m2 x plus c1 minus c2. This tells me x will be equal to x will be equal to c1 minus c2 with a minus upon m1 minus m2. This is the value of x that we have, right? Once you have x, can you also find y? Yes, y can be found by any of these equations that matter. Therefore, 1 will imply y equals m1 x, x is this, minus c1 minus c2 upon m1 minus m2 plus c2. 1. This is y. Okay. And let's solve for y further, which gives me y equals, this is minus m1 c1 plus m1 c2. Okay. And plus m1 c1 by taking the LCM minus m2 c1 upon m1 minus m2. Do you observe that m1 c1 will get cancelled over here, right? And m1 c2 minus m2 c1 will remain. This tells me y is equal to m1 c2 minus m2 c1 upon m1 minus m2 remains. This is the value of y. Okay. 
we have found x and we have found y that is the point of intersection of 1 and 2. Using these two points can we solve, can we substitute these points in third equation. Therefore, third equation will give me m1 c2 minus m2 c1 upon m1 minus m2 is equal to m3 times x, x is minus of c1 minus c2 upon m1 minus m2 okay and plus c3 simply okay multiply by m1 minus m2 in the denominator you have m1 minus m2 let's multiply by that so you get m1 c2 minus m2 c1 minus is equal to minus m3 c1 plus m3 c2 plus you get m1 c3 minus m2 c3 this is what you get please note this observe this carefully right this is what you get this was a complete expression right and we have to rearrange this expression in this particular form so let's bring terms of m1 m2 and m3 together so we have m1 c2 and we have m1 c3 this becomes m1 times c2 minus c3 in the lhs okay then you have m2 c1 over here you have m2 c3 over here this becomes m2 c3 minus m2 c1 so plus m2 times c3 minus c1 okay then you have m3 c1 plus and minus m3 c2 right so plus m3 times c1 minus c2 is what i'll get over here this is equal to zero that's what i get Please observe this carefully. M1 times C2 minus C3 plus M2 times C3 minus C1 plus M3 times C1 minus C2 equals 0 is the expression that I'm getting. If these three lines are concurrent, that is, they pass through the same point, then this is what we wanted to prove. And yes, that's the complete solution of this 10th question, as you can see over here. The 11th question says, find the equation of lines through the point 3, comma 2, which make an angle of 45 degree with the line this. Okay, equation of lines through the point 3 comma 2 which make an angle of 45 degree with the line this and how we do it how do we do that so lines passing through 3 comma 2 does this 3 comma 2 point lie on this particular line first of all let's check this this is 3 minus 4 no this is not equal to 3 so this point is totally outside x minus 2y equals 3 is this line and there's another point 3 comma 2 okay and we are supposed to find the equation of the line through the point 3 comma 2 which makes an angle of 45 degree with the line. So angle of 45 degree with this particular line will be this. Okay and this particular line further passes through the point 3 comma 2. Okay if this is line L1 let's call this L1 and let's call this L2. L2 is question mark. Now for finding L2 we are given one condition directly that it passes through this particular point 3 comma 2. The other condition can be obtained with the help of this angle. Yes. Let's use that condition and get the slope. After that equation of L2 will be very simple. We can use the point slope form and easily get the answer. So for finding L, the slope of this line M2, we'll have to use the result of tan theta, uh, angle between two lines that is tan theta equals M1 minus M2 upon 1 plus m1 m2 and a complete model is over there right so m1 the slope is equal to what so for that let's rearrange this this is 2y equals x minus 3 and you can divide by 2 m1 will be equal to 1 by 2 this is what you get do you observe this yes m1 will be equal to 1 by 2 and we know that tan theta is equal to m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2 that's the angle between two lines if the angle between two lines having slopes m1 m2 is theta then this is a formula let's use that therefore tan 45 degree is equal to m1 which is 1 by 2 minus m2 upon 1 plus 1 by 2 m2 modulus is what i get what is tan 45 degree tan 45 degree is simply one right okay and you have a modulus a huge modulus so the expression that you'll get is half minus m2 upon 1 plus m2 by 2 will be equal to 1 or this expression after removing the modulus half minus m2 upon 1 plus m2 by 2 will be equal to minus 1 this will be 1 or 
minus 1. Let's simplify this. Half minus m2 is equal to 1 plus m2 by 2. Okay. This will become, uh, this will go that side. This is half minus 1, which is minus 1 by 2, is 3 by 2 m2. And this tells me m2 will be equal to minus 1 by 3. That simple calculation, right? We've just calculated this value. Or you can calculate another value of m2 using this expression. This tells me half minus m2 is equal to minus 1 minus m2 by 2. Okay, this minus 1 comes over there. This becomes 3 by 2. This m2 goes over there. This becomes m2 by 2. And this tells me m2 is equal to 3. Oh, we are getting two particular values of m2. Yes. Which of these values are we talking about? If this particular angle is 45 degree, do you observe that there can be another line through this particular point which can make an angle of 45 degree over here as well? Yes or no? Yes. And if you observe carefully, if this angle is 45 degree, this angle is 45 degree, this particular angle will be 90 degree. And do you observe that? Yes, the two slopes that you have obtained, if you multiply them, you get M1, M2. This product of these two is minus 1 by 3 times 3, which is minus 1. Yes. The angle between these two lines, two possibilities of L2 will be 90 degree as you can clearly see in that diagram as well and you can observe with the values as well. Right. So, equation of L2. Next, let us write the equation of L2. Using point P3, 2 and slope y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This is the form that we will be using. This becomes y minus 2 is equal to minus 1 by 3 times x minus 3 or y minus 2 is equal to 3 times x minus 3 using the two values of m2, right? Slopes. This becomes 3y minus 6 is equal to minus x plus 3 which tells me x plus 3y is equal to 9. This is one of the possibilities or you get y equals 3x minus 7. This is the other possibility, this or this. That's the answer for this question. As you can clearly see over here. That's the complete solution of this 11th one. Question number 12 says, find the equation of the line passing through the point of intersection of the lines 4x plus 7y minus 3 and 2x minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. That is equal intercepts on the axis. Okay, very interesting. So the person says that equation of the line passing through the points of intersection of these two lines. Let's say uh, there are two lines over here and we are supposed to find the equation of another line which passes through the point of intersection of these two lines. That's one thing. Okay. So for that, we can easily find the point of intersection and get one condition on that line. Right. The other condition is equal intercepts on the axis. Okay. And if you recall, equal intercepts on the axis simply mentions that if this and this are equal for this line L, then the slope of this line will be minus 1. That is something which we know. Okay. If the slope is minus 1, for equal intercepts, the slope is minus 1. And we can find this point, then our job is done, half done. Right. We'll get the two conditions and write the equation of line in terms of point slope form. Yes. So, let's begin by finding this particular point of intersection of the two given lines. Two given lines, 4x plus 7y minus 3 equals 0, 2x minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. This is 1, this is 2. Solve 1 and 2. To get P, point P, right? We are supposed to get point P first. Okay, and how do we get that? Let's see, uh, we have, this is 2x, this is 4x. We can subtract and get the value of x, right? Uh, get the value of y from there. So, equation 1 minus 2 times equation 2 gives me equation 1 minus twice of this, 4x minus 4x will go 7y plus 6y. Since you are subtracting, 7 plus 6 is 13y and minus 3 minus 2 is equal to 0. Yes, this is subtracting, right? Subtracting 2 times this. This tells me y equals 5 by 13. And what is the value of x equal to? Therefore, 2x is equal to 3y minus 1 which tells me x equals, this 3 by minus 1 will further be equal to 15 by 13 minus 1, 15 by 13 minus 1, which is actually 2 by 13. So, x will be equal to 1 by 13. The point P, which we wanted to find is this. 
1 by 13 comma 5 by 15. So for the line L we have point P 1 by 13 comma 5 by 13 and the next thing is slope M equals minus 1. Equation can be found in terms of point slope form as y minus y1 is equal to m times x minus x1. This tells me that y minus 5 by 13 is equal to minus 1 times x minus 1 by 13 gives me. Further, you can observe that you can multiply with 13. This is 13y minus 5 is equal to minus 13x and plus 1. This is what I will get, right? This tells me 13 times x plus 13 times y is equal to 6 is the answer for this particular question, right? Equal intercepts on the axis, yes, slope will be minus 1 and point has been found in this manner, right? That is the complete solution of this question. The 13th question says, show that the equation of the line passing to the origin and making angle theta with the line y is equal to mx plus c is this. Okay. equation of line passing to the origin and making an angle theta with the line y is equal to mx plus c. So y equal to mx plus c is this line and if you have a line, another line, this is L1 which is y equals mx plus c, the slope is m, right? And you have another line L2 whose equation is supposed to be found, whose equation is supposed to be found but this line passes through the origin, that's given, right? So point is given if you can find the slope, this is if you can find the slope m2 then your job is done, right? So for finding M2, we can use angle between two lines. This is theta, which is given to us, right? And tan theta is equal to M1 minus M2 upon 1 plus M1, M2. It's modulus as well. This is tan theta for us, right? Since theta is given in the question, we'll use this theta. M1 is M, which is okay. M1 is equal to M. This is given. And M2 is supposed to be found, right? M2 is equal to question mark. So we can find M2 and thereby get the answer easily because line passing to the origin will be Y is equal to M2 X. The only thing that is required is this M2. If we can find M2, that's a complete proof, right? So let's use this equation further and see where does that take me. M1 is M minus M2 upon 1 plus M M2 Modulus was tan theta, so this becomes plus or minus tan theta. Yes or no? Yes, this is what you get. Okay, we are supposed to find M2 from here and if you observe for finding M2, let's bring this 1 plus M M2 over there and simplify. So M minus M2 is equal to plus minus tan theta plus or minus M tan theta times M2. Okay, and you can bring this M2 term over here. M minus this is plus or minus tan theta comes on the left hand side is equal to this is m2 plus or minus m tan theta times m2 if you see you can take out m2 common so m2 will be equal to this particular expression will come in the denominator this is 1 plus or minus m tan theta and this expression here what will this be equal to if you multiply minus with this plus this becomes m minus tan theta and if you multiply with minus, this becomes plus. So m minus plus tan theta will be 1 plus minus m tan theta. This is what you observe for m2. When this numerator has a minus sign, this denominator will have a plus sign. And when this numerator has a plus sign, this denominator will have a minus sign. That's what is meant, meant by this particular expression, right? If you observe, you get a similar kind of a thing there as well, right? So equation of line L2 will be y is equal to m2 x or you can say y by x equals you can say y by x is equal to m2 over here and the value of m2 can be substituted this is m okay uh, for writing that form you can say that for in the numerator if you have a plus in the denominator you'll have a minus right in the denominator i can interchange these as well and write it in that form or i can leave it as this as well this is exactly same this is what i have right that's the answer for this particular question answer or that's a complete proof of this particular question over here this is the equation of line passing to origin and making an angle theta with this given line right that's a complete proof of this question 
The 14 question says, in what ratio the line joining this and this is divided by the line this? Okay. In what ratio it should actually be the line segment? It should actually be the line segment. Because we divide a line segment on a line for that matter. Line segment joining this and this is divided by the line this. Okay. So if you have x plus y equals 4 and this divides the join of minus 1 comma 1 and b 5 comma 7 in some ratio. This line segment is divided in some ratio. Let us call this ratio lambda is to 1. Okay. Then we are supposed to find the value of lambda. Basically we are supposed to find lambda is to 1 actually or indirectly we are supposed to find lambda only because 1 is already known, right? Lambda is to 1 is equal to question mark. This is the target, right? Or indirectly we are supposed to find lambda for that matter. If you observe, if this ratio is lambda is to 1, we can write the coordinates of P easily. P, the coordinates of P can be written, right? Coordinates of P will be lambda times 5 plus 1 times minus 1, 1 times minus 1 upon lambda plus 1. This will be the x coordinate. The y coordinate will be lambda times this 7 plus 1 times this 1 upon lambda plus 1. These are coordinates of P, right? What is this? 5 lambda minus 1 upon lambda plus 1 comma 7 lambda plus 1 upon lambda plus 1. Okay, looks pretty complicated, but you see this is the only complicated thing. It is also not very complicated. It's pretty simple. Once you find this P, do you observe that this particular point P lies on this line? Yes. Okay. Since this P lies on x plus y equals 4, therefore this particular coordinates will be satisfying this condition. Yes. So we can substitute it over here. This is 5 lambda minus 1 upon lambda plus 1 plus 7 lambda plus 1 upon lambda plus 1 is equal to 4. This is what I get. Okay, you can multiply with lambda plus 1 throughout and where does that take me? 5 lambda minus 1 plus 7 lambda plus 1 is equal to 4 lambda plus 4. This is what you have, right? And simplifying it further, this is 12 lambda, 4 lambda will come over here. This is 8 lambda. This goes equals 4 or you can say that lambda is equal to 4 by 8 which is 1 by 2. This tells me lambda is 1 by 2. Therefore, required ratio. Therefore, ratio required ratio is lambda is to 1 which is 1 by 2 is to 1 which is actually 1 is to 2 ratio can be written in this particular manner and yes that is my answer for this question over here important thing one important thing that lambda could have actually come out to be negative as well and in case lambda comes out to be negative one thing is for sure that the division will not be an internal division the division will be external. Had lambda been minus 1 by 2, this ratio will be 1 is to 2, but we'll say external division 1 is to 2. Here, lambda comes out to be positive. So, this is actually an internal division, means the line segment is cut internally, right? By an internal point P. That P lies between A and B. That's the meaning of this positive value obtained over here in this question. As you can see, P and P. That's the complete solution of this 14th. The 15th question says, find the distance of the line this from the point this along the line this. Okay, we are not supposed to find the perpendicular distance. We are supposed to find another kind of distance over here. But for finding this kind of a distance, distance of the line this, okay, line this 4x plus 7y plus 5 is equal to 0 from the point 1 comma 2. Okay, directly we generally find this perpendicular distance. But here the person says, okay, don't find this distance directly. First check whether this point lies on this line or not. 2 minus 2 equals 0. Yes, this particular point lies on this particular line and this particular line will be some random line. This is 2x minus y equals 0 along the line this. If you want to find along the line, the distance along the line, then this is the distance which you are looking forward to. I am looking forward to this particular distance over here. Okay, so for that I need this point Q first of all, right? That's the only thing that I'm interested in. If I can find Q, then distance PQ is not a difficult thing. And Q as you can clearly observe is the point of intersection of these two lines. Solving them together will give me P, Q. Solving will give me Q. So Y is equal to 2X, let's substitute 4X plus 7 times 2X plus 5 
is equal to 0 which tells me okay 7 times 2 is 14 plus 4 is 18x plus 5 x equals minus 5 by 18 and y equals 2x which is minus 10 by 18 this is what I have right it can be done as minus 5 by 9 as well but this is what I have this is the point Q so once we have point Q which is minus 5 by 18 comma minus 10 by 18 and point P is 1 comma 2 therefore PQ the distance can be found easily right under root of 1 plus 5 by 18 which is 23 by 18 and its square 2 plus this which is 28 by 18 just a minute, this is not 28 this is a 2 right so we have 18 times 2 2 minus or minus this so 36 plus 10 is 46 actually this is 46 by 18 and it's a square okay if you observe carefully this is 23 by 18 square will come out common you get 1 plus 2 square which is 4 in the root this is 23 root 5 upon 18 is my answer for this question over here this is the answer 23 root 5 upon 18 for this particular question as you can see behind me question number 16 says find the direction in which a straight line must be drawn through the point minus 1 comma 2 so that its point of intersection with the line x plus y equal to 4 may be at a distance of 3 units from this point now how will we deal with this question please take a look at this if you have studied something called parametric form of equation of line you would be thinking about a particular method of parametric form but then the NCID people have not touched upon that and for that uh, in case of direction we just have the slope right so we can talk about the slope first of all and see where does that take us let's say let's say direction in which a straight line must be drawn through the point minus 1 comma 2 let's say this is the point minus 1 comma 2 and this is a line let us say the line is y is equal to mx plus c let's pick this line for that matter right instead of using any other form let's use the point slope uh, the slope intercept form this is easy right and we directly have the slope which is required at the end of the day right the slope is required at the end of the day direction in which straight line must be drawn so that its point of intersection with the line this this is another line x plus y equals 4 the point of intersection with this line this q this is point p let's say and this point q maybe at a distance of 3 units okay this distance is 3 units that's what the person is saying okay pq is 3 this is given pq is equal to 3 okay and one of the points is given on this particular line therefore we can say that 2 is equal to minus m plus c or you can say c is equal to m plus 2 in this manner you can eliminate c easily right or not yes so once you have eliminated c what text you now have the equation of this line you already have this equation can you find the coordinates of q yes once you find the coordinates of q then you can find uh, the value of m m is the unknown using this distance pq right or not yes let's do that how will we do that let's begin with x plus y equals 4 is the first line y is equal to mx plus c c is m plus 2 is this equation right let's uh, replace y with 4 minus x okay solving these two gives me y equals 4 minus x this is 4 minus x is equal to mx plus m plus 2 okay this tells me x will go over here m plus 1 4 minus 2 2 minus m upon m plus 1 is equal to x this is the value of x and y equals 4 minus x so 4m mm, plus 4m plus 4 minus 2 plus m will be 5m 4 minus 2 is 2 upon m plus 1 this is the value of y right this is what you have okay please check this value once again this is 4m plus 4 okay this this is okay this is the value of y if you can observe this carefully yes these are the coordinates of q q coordinates have been found over here therefore pq equals 3 and with this okay i can substitute this x2 minus x1 easily y2 minus y1 easily this tells me that pq square is equal to 9 first of all right and now, now let's substitute pq square x2 minus x1 will be 2 minus m upon m plus 1 minus or minus 1 will become plus 1 so 2 minus m upon m plus 1 plus 1 squared this is x2 minus x1 whole square y2 minus y1 whole square this 5m plus 2 upon m plus 1 minus that 2 
squared is equal to 9. Oh. And now I see a m plus 1 in the denominator and you observe that you seem to be getting a quadratic in terms of m. A quadratic in terms of m implies that the answer, the, you'll get probably two answers, two answers, yes. So one of the distances, one of the points q can be at a distance three units like this and another point can be at a distance of three units like this, right? That is the possibility in this particular question, right? Although you may get one more condition that if both the roots are same, if both the roots are same, that this 3 is actually the perpendicular distance. Can you check the perpendicular distance of this point? This is minus 1 plus 2 minus 4. So this becomes okay, 3 upon root 2. Now this is 3, 3 upon root 2 is smaller than 3. Okay, so Therefore, you are supposed to get two particular values for Q, two particular values of M for that matter. right? And this quadratic seems to be going in that way. Okay, so let's try to uh, multiply with this m plus 1 whole square. This will come in the denominator common. Let's bring that over there. In the numerator, you get 2 minus m plus m plus 1. What is that? 3. This is 3 squared plus, what is this equal to? 5m plus 2 minus 2m. 5m minus 2m is 3m. 2 minus 2 is gone. Okay, this is squared. This is in the right hand side, you have 9m plus 1 whole squared. Okay, what is this giving me further? This tells me that this is 9 plus, this is 9m square. And this becomes 9m square plus 18m plus 9. Okay. And here a very peculiar thing happens. Peculiar? No, it seems, does not seem very peculiar initially. But then this says that 9m square, 9 square is getting cancelled. Yes. Okay. So you were initially maybe getting a quadratic, but this m square terms gets cancelled. So you are left with only a linear equation. And you can also observe this 9 also gets cancelled and what you are left with is 18m equals 0 or m equals 0 seems like the only possible solution. But then we guessed that yes, if this is one solution, then you are supposed to get another solution in this manner. And herein lies one important observation. What is that observation? That if in such cases when the uh, coefficient of m square becomes 0, or when you seem to be getting a quadratic, but at the end of this solution, you see that uh, the term of m square gets cancelled, then the one of the roots has been missed. And what is that root? You remember, you remember one thing, that slope is not defined for an inclination of 90 degree, right? So slope is not defined means such a value of m cannot be obtained in such an equation, right? And that is the value of m that is missed m undefined or m tends to infinity that's what you call it right m tends to infinity or m undefined is what you want to call it right inclination in this case inclination in this case is 90 degree so this is theta equals 90 degree line and this is theta equals 0 degree so what you are doing here is actually the direction in which a straight line can be drawn is along the x-axis and in the along the y-axis that's what you are showing over here so one of the lines will be parallel to the x-axis the other line will be parallel to the y-axis that's what you can comment on the basis of this final answer and obviously with some application of common sense as we did over there right this is important and this is one of those typical things that you should be aware of very well right something which we have observed from the diagram over there and then analyze this particular answer that you are getting over here right so whenever whenever you seem to be getting quadratic and that term of m square gets cancelled but in such questions of straight lines what you will have is one of the roots one of the roots which was undefined has been missed okay for that theta equals to 90 degree that particular inclination of 90 degree has been missed you pick that inclination of 90 degree as well Right, that's the final solution for this particular 16th question. One line is parallel to the x-axis, other line is parallel to the y-axis from this particular point. Right. So one of the lines will be x equal to minus 1, the other line will be y equals to 2. And you will get two possible points q. Right. That's the final answer for this question as you can see over here. The 17th question says the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle has its ends at the points 1, 3 and minus 4, 1. Okay, find an equation of the legs of the triangle. Mind you, this is not such a simple question. What do we have? Okay, you are given the hypotenuse of a right angle triangle has its ends. So you, for a right angle triangle, 
the person has given the ends of this hypotenuse. The ends will be, this is let us say A minus 4 comma 1 and this is let us say B 1 comma 3. Okay, this is given. Although I can mark these points on the Cartesian plane and will get some kind of a diagram, some kind of a proper diagram over there. But observe, okay, and this angle is supposed to be 90 degree. This is what the person is saying and we are supposed to find the equation of these. But the person has not mentioned find the equation. The person has very smartly mentioned find an equation of the legs of the triangle. Now what do we mean by an? There is some catch over there. Yes, there is a very particular catch. Do you observe? Do you observe? Um, do you remember circle? Yes. In a circle or in a semicircle precisely, do you remember what is the angle made by angle subtended by diameter in a semicircle? Yes. So, let us pick up this particular circle and for a diameter, for a line, for a chord passing through the center, let us say this is a diameter, do you observe that this particular angle over here will be 90 degree, similarly another particular angle over here will also be 90 degree, this will also be right angle triangle, similarly here also you will get a right angle triangle and in all of these right angle triangles do you observe that this AB will be the hypotenuse. Yes or no? This AB will be the hypotenuse, yes. These are two perpendicular sides, that is the hypotenuse, right? Perpendicular sides and the hypotenuse, yes. So, if you are only given the end points of the hypotenuse, if you are only given the end points of hypotenuse, how many right angle triangles are possible, do you think? You pick up any point on this, you get a right angle triangle, yes, on this circle, yes. Okay, so what we have done is we simply draw a circle having this hypotenuse as diameter. You pick up the center first of all, take this as the radius and then you draw a circle. Yes, the circle will pass through this particular vertex. Yes or no? Yes. Okay, but this is not the only possible triangle. There can be many other triangles. Yes. So the person has said find an equation, right? Just give me one at least. Okay. There will be plenty of sides, plenty of equations for plenty of sides for that matter. We can find at least one, okay. And that is the important thing that you observe that you are finding just one particular thing. And the easiest lines are parallel to x axis, parallel to x axis, if that is the case. And here, if you observe, this is 1, this is 1, this is 3 minus 4. Let us draw the points in the Cartesian plane first of all and see where does that take us, right. So, one end of the hypotenuse is 1, 3. So, this is 1, 3 is this particular point. This is 1, 1, 2, 3. Okay, this point is 1, 3. Then the next point is, okay, minus 4, 1 is the other point. So, we have minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and 1 is the other point, right? This is what you have, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4 and this is 1. So, this is the other point which is there, minus 4, 1. Now, now, let us try to create a right angle triangle with this hypotenuse, right? If this is the hypotenuse, do you observe that a right angle triangle can be formed very easily if I take these two sides? Yes, these are two perpendicular sides. So, I can pick, I can pick one of the cases can be x equal to 1, x equal to 1 is one of the sides and y equals, for y equals, y equals, this is 1 again, right? y equals plus 1 is the side x equal to 1 and y is equal to 1 is one possibility of a right angle triangle. Then somebody else would come say, okay, so we could have chosen this particular right angle triangle as well. Yes, we could have chosen this as well. Or second possibility could be x equals, x equals this minus 4 and y equals this 3. This is another possibility. But are these only two possibilities? These are the simplest possibilities that you can find directly, right, by observation. But there will be plenty others as you can see. Right. There will be plenty others. Yeah, there will be plenty others. Right angle triangles formed with different different points on this circle in this circular curve over here. Right. And you can choose any of these points. But uh, currently we haven't studied circles as such. So we don't know which points lie on the circle. And uh, since we don't know that, we will not comment about that. We will simply say, okay, this is an equation of perpendicular sides, this is another possibility of perpendicular sides. Similarly, we can have many such possibilities of perpendicular sides. But this is the complete analysis of this question and with the help of this, you have understood this and this is one of the possible answers, right? This is another possible answer which is correct, right? 
So, the person has mentioned find an equation and we have found an equation for these perpendicular sides as here. Right? That is the complete solution of this question. The 18th question says find the image of the point 3 comma 8 with respect to the line this assuming the line to be a plane mirror. Oh, pretty interesting. We have a line which is x plus 3y equals 7. We have a point P and considering this as the this as a plane mirror, we are supposed to find the image of P. Okay. P is 3 comma 8 and if you want to find the image, let us call this point alpha comma beta. If you want to find the image, can you observe that the line segment PQ for image, the line segment PQ, if this is the incident ray which is just perpendicular to the surface, the point Q will lie on that incident ray only. Reflected ray will be this, right? This is the incident ray, this is the reflected ray, this is the reflected ray and just behind that will be this particular point. This distance will be this distance and this line will be perpendicular. Now, if this is a plane mirror, you will have many such lines. But I am considering that particular line which is perpendicular to the plane mirror. And yes, Q will lie on that line only. Yes or no? That is a special thing, right? Okay. So, for plane mirror, this happens. And once this happens, then now we can comment on finding the values of alpha and beta somehow. How do we find that? For that, we will need this foot of the perpendicular. In one of the previous questions, in some exercise, we had found this foot of the perpendicular for this point P. And after solving the basics, I had given you one formula as well over there. So here also what we will do is, we will solve using the basic concepts first of all. At the end of the day, at the end of this particular solution, I will also give you one formula for finding alpha gamma beta directly as well. right? So let us talk about this alpha and beta from the basics. So what you will do is, for alpha and beta, you have two unknowns, so you will need two conditions. And do you see that I have those two conditions over here. The midpoint of PQ is M which lies on this line. That is one condition. And the slope of PQ, slope of this line are perpendicular, right? These are perpendicular lines. The product of the slopes will be minus 1. That is the other condition that we have, right? So, let us use this. This is M1. M1, the slope will be minus 1 by 3. You can check that slope, right? Okay. And M of PQ. So, M1 times M of PQ will be equal to minus 1. This is one of the conditions. Okay. So, for this, for this, we will need m of pq. Let us find m of pq first. m of pq is pretty simple. This is beta minus 8 upon alpha minus 3. Is that okay? Yes. So, I can multiply that with m of m1 which is minus 1 by 3 and make the product minus 1 and I will get one relation between alpha and beta. So, therefore, 1 gives me beta minus 8 over alpha minus 3 times minus 1 by 3 is equal to minus 1 which tells me okay minus 1 minus 1 gets cancelled and this 3 times alpha minus 3 goes over there this is beta minus 8 is equal to 3 alpha minus 9 which tells me beta equals 3 alpha minus 1. This is the equation obtained from 1. This is 1a. Let us call this 1a or 2 because we need the second condition right. The second condition is the midpoint m of pq. Can you find the coordinates of m? Yes. This is alpha plus 3 x1 plus x2 by 2 x1 plus x2 by 2 and similarly y1 plus y2 by 2. This lies on x plus 3y equals 7. This is the second condition actually. And using the second condition, we can find the second equation. Therefore, using second condition, we can find the second equation. What is that? Let us put this point over here. Alpha plus 3 by 2 plus 3 times beta plus 8 by 2 is equal to 7. This is what I have. Right? Can we simplify this further? Yes, we can multiply by 2 throughout and this becomes alpha plus 3 plus 3 beta plus 24 is equal to 14. Or this tells me that alpha plus 3 beta plus 14 is what I am getting, is it uh, 13 precisely, 13 is equal to 0. This is the other equation between alpha and beta, this is, let us call this 2a, since it has been obtained from the second condition, let us call this 2a. Right, so now I can solve using 1a and 2a, I can get the values of alpha and beta. 1a, okay, let us use 1a and 2a combined gives me that alpha plus 3 beta, 3 beta will be 9 alpha minus 3 
plus 13 is equal to 0, which tells me 10 alpha plus 10 is equal to 0, which tells me that alpha is equal to minus 1. Okay, and beta, beta will be 3 alpha minus 1, which is minus 3 minus 1 minus 4. And yes, therefore image, image of this point will be minus 1 comma minus 4. That is my answer for this question. Yes, that's the final answer. Yes, that's the final answer. But this is using calculations concepts, right? And using basic conditions, that's all. Using slope, midpoint and all. But do we have a direct formula? Yes, we have a direct formula. And that formula is similar to the one we saw for foot of the perpendicular. Let's say we have a line L, AX plus BY plus C equals 0. And we have a point P, X1 comma Y1. We want to find the image of Q. This is, let's call this x3, comma y3. Why not x2, y2? Because we used x2, y2 for this m, right? Okay. So, for finding this image, what we do is x3 minus x1 upon x3 minus x1 upon this a is equal to y3 minus y1 upon this b is equal to minus 2 times a x1 plus b y1 plus c upon a square plus b square mind you there is no under root there is no modulus over here there is no modulus there is no under root this here is minus 2 take care of this and yes this is a formula so along with this if you find this one you can use first and third to get the value of x3 you can use second and third to get the value of y3 in this manner in that formula for x2 comma y2 you had x2 minus x1 upon a y2 minus y1 upon b here instead of minus 2 you had minus 1 and rest everything was same rest everything was same right so the formula for m and q are quite similar quite similar and you can use for counted exams you can use these formula directly otherwise you have this whole method and we are good to go with this as well right that's the complete solution of this 18th question for us the 19th question says, if the lines y equal to 3x plus 1 and 2y equals to x plus 3 are equally inclined to the line y is equal to mx plus 4, find the value of m. Okay, what do you mean by equally inclined? Okay, this is the line y equals mx plus 4. And we have, we are looking at two particular lines which are equally inclined. Means this angle is theta, this angle is also theta. That's what the person is saying, right? Okay, so we have lines y equals 3x plus 1 and 2y equals x plus 3 which tells me yeah this line is y equals 1 by 2x plus 3 by 2 and these are equally inclined to this line implies if this obviously the slope is m this is this tells me that the slope m1 equals 3 and this tells me the slope m2 equals 1 by 2. So I can apply tan theta for this and tan theta for this, equate them to be the same, equal, e equate them and then get the value of m from here. Yes, that's what I can do. So tan theta will be equal to modulus of between this line and this line, okay, between this and this, we have m minus m2, which is m minus 1 by 2 upon 1 plus m into 1 by 2. That is m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m1 m2. And this can also be equal to m1 minus m2 upon 1 plus m1 m2, which is m minus 3 upon 1 plus m into 3. This is equal to this. So, the angle is theta in each of these cases, in both of these cases. So, I can directly write this expression, right? And uh, therefore, I have an equation in terms of m. And can I solve that equation to get the value of m? Yes, I can. Okay, let's rewrite this equation a bit. This is 2 minus m multiplied by 2 and divide by 2. This is 2 plus m. Modulus is equal to m minus 3 upon 1 plus 3m and its modulus. Do I have this? Yes. Okay, in the numerator, I actually have 2m minus 1. Please correct that. This is not this. This is 2m minus 1 in the numerator, right? And this is 2 plus m in the denominator, right? And modulus of x modulus of y implies that either 2m minus 1 upon 2 plus m is equal to m minus 3 upon 1 plus 3m either this or or either the magnitudes since the magnitudes are same either these will be exactly same or these will be negative of each other right so 2m minus 1 upon 2 plus m will be equal to minus of m minus 3 upon 1 plus 3m 
So these are the two equations which we want to solve after this, right? Let us pick up the first one. For solving this, we have to cross multiply and see where does that take us. So 3m plus 1, 2m minus 1, 3m into 2m is 6m square and minus 3m plus 2m is minus m and minus 1 is equal to m minus 3m plus 2 is m square minus 3m plus 2m is minus m and we have minus 6 over here. You observe that minus m gets cancelled and you, what you get is 5m square is equal to minus 5 which tells me m square is equal to minus 1 and this will not give me any real value of m. This will not give me any real value of m as you can clearly observe over here. Right. So what about the next one? Let us take a look at the next one. In the next one, what do we have? We will get similar expressions but with a y minus extra minus on the right hand side. So in the left hand side, you have 6m square. In the left hand side, you have in this particular side, you have 6m square minus m minus 1 which is equal to multiply this with minus what you have is minus m square plus m plus 6 right that's what you have and this becomes 7 m square and minus 2 m minus 7 is equal to 0 that's what I'm getting 7 m square minus 2 m minus 7 equal to 0 and from here can I get the value of m yes this is minus 14 but can it be factorized oh, it will be difficult yes this is 49 actually minus 49 the product is minus 49 and uh, cannot be factorized so let's use the quadratic formula on this m equals minus b plus minus under root of b square minus 4 into a into c now 4 into a into c 4 into 7 into 7 with a minus becomes plus and uh, 7 into 7 is 49 into 4 is 196 okay upon 2 into 7 which is 14 Okay, this is 200. 200 can be written as 200 is actually equal to hmm, you can multiply with uh, this is actually 16 into 16 no it is not 16 there is actually 4 into 50 or uh, 100 into 2 you can say 100 into 2 can be written as 10 root 2 in the numerator this will become 10 root 2 there is already a 2 over here so we can cancel that factor of 2 from the numerator and denominator this becomes 1 plus minus 5 root 2 upon 7 and yes this gives me the value of m for this particular question if the lines this and this are equally inclined to the line this find the value of m that's what you get over here that's the final answer for this question as you can see clearly behind me let's move on to the next question after this the 20th question says if some of the perpendicular distances of a variable point p x comma y from the lines this and this is always 10 show that p must move on a line okay let's take a look at this question sum of perpendicular distance of a variable point p from the lines this and this so these two lines do not are not parallel this is one line there is another line and this is x plus y minus 5 is equal to 0 this is 3x minus 2y plus 7 equals 0 and there is a point p yes x comma y x comma y and you are talking about this distance and you are talking about this distance let's call this d1 let's call this d2 and the condition is sum of the perpendicular distances d1 plus d2 is said to be 10 okay d1 plus d2 is said to be 10 show that p must move on a line okay so you have to find the relation between this x and y and as the person is saying that relation will be a linear relation between x and y therefore you can say that p will move on a straight line right okay in other words this is basically a question based on locus yes now what is locus now, for those of you who have studied for completed exams you would uh, realize that this is a direct question based on locus otherwise you're not supposed to worry about anything simply focus on the solution because locus is nothing for that matter right <laughs> so let's see d1 plus d2 equal to 10 how will we apply this condition so for applying this condition what do we have we can directly write the distance of this point from this and distance from this point from this and we can substitute it over here d1 for that matter is modulus of substitute this over here this becomes x plus y minus 5 upon square root of 1 square plus 1 square which is this d2 again is equal to modulus of 3x minus 2y plus 7 upon under root of 3 square 2 square which is under root of 13 modulus this is what I get these are d1 and d2 respectively sum of perpendicular distance of variable point from the lines this and this is always 10 so d1 plus d2 is given to be 10 and we are supposed to find a relation between x and y after this
So, let us write this d1 and d2 in this particular expression and see where does that take us. So, what do we get? x plus y minus 5 upon, I have a root 2 in the denominator, yes, and I can write a modulus on this only for that matter, plus d2, d2 is 3x minus 2y plus 7 upon root 13 and you have a modulus which is equal to 10. Now, observe this expression carefully. Now, modulus, what does it does? Uh, what does modulus do? Modulus actually gives a plus or minus sign to this or gives a plus or minus sign to this, right? Does it create some squares or something? No, it does not create any squares or something. So, you have a linear expression in terms of x and y, linear expression in terms of x and y, you will add those terms and you will get a linear expression in terms of x and y, will you? Yes. You will simply get a linear expression in terms of x and y if you remove the modulus as well. Right? At max, you will have four cases. Right? One of the cases will be this opens with a plus sign, this opens with a plus sign. Another case could be this opens with a plus sign, this opens with a minus sign. Another case could be this opens with a minus, this opens with a plus and the fourth case can be this opens with a minus, this opens with a minus sign. The fourth modulus can open in this way. The two modulus can open in these particular ways and it actually depends, it actually depends on the location of P with respect to these two lines. P lies in this quadrant, this particular region, this particular region or this particular region or this particular region. That is dependent on the location of P. Now, we are not concerned with the location of P over here, but these are four cases and they are actually based on that idea. Okay. But each of these cases, do you realize that in each of these cases, what is happening is you will get a linear relation in X and Y. In this case also, you will get a linear relation. Basically, x and y will not be raised to any powers and you will get basically x and y in addition only, right? x and y are not coming in the denominators, you will not get any powers, you will get x power 1, y power 1 and along with them, you will get co some coefficient of x and y which will be complicated. You can see this will be root 13 x, 3 root 2 x or something of that sort, right? So, you will get uh, root 13 plus 3 root 2 or minus 3 root 2, something of that sort. So, in all of these cases, you will get linear relation in x and y and yes, yes, that is the only important thing that you need to observe. You can solve all of these four cases or you can solve any one and then on the basis of that, you can comment that P lies on a straight line. That is the complete proof of this. What? Oh, you haven't solved any of these? No, I haven't solved any of these. You can solve any of these or you can solve all of these on your own. First cross multiply this root 3, root 2 and this will become 10 root 26 over here on the right hand side and take the plus plus signs then take the plus minus sign then take minus plus sign and take the minus minus signs and in each of these cases you will get a linear relation between x and y that will be equation of a straight line in each of these cases. So, point P lies on a straight line yes that is a complete proof for this particular question I am not solving it any further I am not solving the cases any further right? you can do that on your own that is pretty simple right that is the complete solution of this 20th question. The 21st question says, find equation of the line which is equidistant from parallel lines. Okay, from parallel lines. Are these lines parallel? The coefficients are 3x and 2y. Then the coefficients are 9x and 6y. Oh, but I can divide by 3. Right. So, one of the lines is, the person says, okay, they are parallel lines. So, this is 9x plus 6y equals 7, which can be written as 3x plus 2y equals 7 by 3, right, dividing by this. And the other line is 3x plus 2y equals minus 6. This is what you get, right? This is what you get. These are the two lines. And uh, yes, we have made the coefficient same. The next thing that we want to look forward to is a line which is equidistant from these two lines. Parallel, parallel, parallel and equidistant, okay? Equidistant means this distance d, this is distance d. Okay. How will we deal with this? So, the equation of this line, so which is parallel to these two, will be of 3x plus 2y equal to something c. In the right hand side, you will have c. And our target is actually to find the c. And for finding c, we need just one condition, right or not? Yes, we just need one condition. And uh, are we given that condition? Yes, this is equidistant, right? So, let us apply distance between two parallel lines to get the value of c. And what is the distance between two parallel lines equal to? distance between two parallel lines equals c1 minus c2 upon under root of a square plus b square. Okay, this is the value of t. So, let us make the distance same t equals 
if you observe, if you observe, I have very carefully written C on the right hand side in each of these, right. So I can take C1 as this, C2 as this, one case, and C1 as this, C2 as this, and the other case, right, D. D will be equal to C minus 7 by 3 upon under root of, coefficients are exactly same, right. This is 3 square plus 2 square, modulus. And it is also equal to C1 minus C2, which is C minus or minus 6 becomes C plus 6 upon root of 3 square plus 2 square and a modulus. So this is C minus 7 by 3 modulus upon under root of 13. C plus 6 modulus upon under root of 13. Oh, this gets cancelled. Yes, this gets cancelled. And we have two modulus. So either C minus 7 by 3 will be equal to C plus 6 or C minus 7 by 3 will be equal to minus of C plus 6. This is either they will be equal or they will be just negative. So each other here you observe that C gets cancelled minus 7 by 3 equals 6 which is not okay. Okay, This does not give me any value. Okay and what about this one? This tells me that C minus 7 by 3 is equal to minus C minus 6 which tells me 2C is equal to 7 by 3 minus 6 which is 7 minus 18, 7 minus 18 is minus 11 by 3 and this further tells me C equals minus 11 by 6, okay. If C is equal to minus 11 by 6, then the equation of the line, equation of line, the required equation of the line will be 3x plus 2y is equal to minus 11 by 6. Let's multiply by 6, this is 18x plus 12y and let's bring that 11 over there, this is plus 11 equals 0. That's the equation of like 18x plus 12y plus 11 equals 0 and that's the complete solution of this question number 21 for us. 22 says a ray of light passing through point 1 comma 2 reflects on the x axis at point A and reflected ray passes through the point 5 comma 3. Find the coordinates of A. A pretty interesting question, right? X axis acts as the reflector and when we are talking about X axis, let's draw the actual diagram, right, properly. So, a ray of light passing through the point 1 comma 2, 1 comma 2 is somewhere here, right, this is point 1 comma 2, reflects on the X axis at point A and the reflected ray passes through the point 5 comma 3, let's mark 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 comma 3 is this, right, this is 5 comma 3 and where do you think the reflected ray will strike on the X axis? So, the ray will go in this direction and then will be probably go in this direction, right? This is what you will get. This particular point is called A and any point on the x-axis can be denoted by this h comma 0. Yes or no? Yes. What is special about this point and how do we find this particular point? So, if you observe reflection, properties of reflection, your laws of reflection, something of that sort. This is incident ray and this is reflected ray, okay? But this reflected ray seem to be coming from somewhere, yeah. And do you observe that this particular point over here, which is just opposite this, oh, just the mirror image of this one comma two, yes, this is a point which is important for us. If this is B, this is C, then this B prime is important because the reflected ray seems to be coming from this B prime actually. Yes, this reflected ray seems to be coming from B prime actually. B prime is the image of this B in X axis. Now for any point, if you want to take the image of any point in the x-axis, what do you observe? For any point alpha comma beta, if you want to take the image, the x-coordinate remains same and the y-coordinate just becomes negative. So image is this. For any point P, the image is P prime. This. Okay. So for point 1 comma 2, the image will be 1 comma minus 2. This is important first thing. Right. If you can note this carefully, then next solution will be very simple. Now, B prime, A and C, actually these three points are collinear, right? Or you can say that the line joining B prime and C, line joining B prime and C passes through A. This is the important thing. And if I find the equation of this, then intersection with X axis will give me the point A. Yes or no? Yes. So let's write the equation of B prime C using two point form, right? So Y minus Y1 is equal to something times X minus X1. And what is that something? Y2 minus Y1 upon X2 minus X1, 3 plus 2 upon 5 minus 1. Okay, this is 4. This becomes 4Y minus 12 is equal to 
5x minus 25. And this tells me 5x minus 4y is equal to 13 is the equation of this B prime C. Let us substitute h comma 0 on this. For A, what do we have? 5h minus 0 equals 13, which tells me h equals 13 by 5. Okay. This tells me that point A, coordinates of point A are 13 by 5 comma 0. This is the part, these are the coordinates of point A and yes, that is my answer for this question over here. Find the coordinates of A, these are the coordinates of A. Is that all? Yes, that's all in this complete solution of this question number 22. Let us discuss 23rd question which says prove that the product of lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the points this and this to the line x by a cos theta plus y by v sin theta equal to 1 is b square. Okay, pretty interesting actually. How is this interesting? Actually, this is a result from the chapter something called conic sections. Now, conic sections is a chapter which comes after straight lines in class 11. And uh, what is special about these points? Product of lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the points this and this. This particular question is related to something called an ellipse. So, I will explain the concept of conic section. If you have studied conic section, you will be able to understand this. Otherwise, you can skip this completely, right? Skip this explanation part of conic section, right? For an ellipse, for an ellipse, these are two focus, right? For the standard ellipse, x square by a square plus y square by b square equal to 1. These are the foci, right? And this is equation of any tangent. Oh, product of lengths of perpendiculars is equal to the square of the semi-minor axis. That's a property that's a, uh, let's say, high, one of the highlights of ellipse, right? And questions have been asked in the competitive exams in the past based on this property and similar other properties as well. Right, that's all that we have to discuss from that chapter of conic sections for this question. But, 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 for this particular question, from the point of view of straight lengths, let's talk about this question. So, we are interested in, we are interested in this product of the lengths of perpendiculars from this point on this and this point on this. Let's call the product P1, let's call the other product P2. So, line, line is important, okay. Line is x by a cos theta plus y by b sin theta, y by b sin theta equals 1, okay. We want to simplify this line somehow, maybe, may not be. This is square root of a square plus b square, okay, and this is minus square root of a square plus b square, and this becomes 0, right. Okay, so I don't think so we need to simplify this, do we? No. At max, what we can do is we can take the LCM because these denominators will create a problem. So, why not take the LCM? This becomes uh, Bx cos theta plus Ay sin theta is equal to Ab. This is what I want to write it as. Now, for this particular point, the product P1, sorry, the perpendicular length P1 is equal to, for this, substitute this point over here, B times under root of a square minus b square times cos theta, okay, plus 0 minus ab upon under root of coefficients of x and coefficient of y squared added. This is b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta this is what I get over here and a modulus and a modulus. This is p1 for us. Similarly, can we write p2 as well? Yes, for p2. Instead of square root of a square plus minus b square, we have minus square root of a square minus b square and this is still 0. So, this is minus b square root of a square minus b square and plus 0, okay, there is a cos theta as well. Do not forget that cos theta, yes. So, there is a cos theta plus 0 minus a b and a modulus. In the denominator, you get similar expressions because b cos theta a sin theta squared b cos theta squared a square sin square theta as well. This is what you get. Right. So, p1 and p2 have been found and now we will be looking at product of the lengths of perpendiculars that is p1 and p2 product. So, let us talk about the product p1, p2. What does this look like? Okay. So, we have modulus of this, modulus of this. In the denominator, you have similar expressions, right? And uh, let us write this expression. This is b under root of a square minus b square, okay, and times you have cos theta and then you have minus ab, this is one term in the modulus, 
in the other modulus you have similar expressions but you observe that this is minus this is also minus that modulus will take up that minus and what we will be left with is b under root of a square minus b square times cos theta plus a b precisely this is what you will be left with right plus a b over here take this carefully take a look at this carefully and in the denominator under root of this under root of this same expressions under root squared will actually give me b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta in the denominator okay we are almost at the point of simplification observe in the numerator you have modulus of x into modulus of y which is equal to modulus of xy right so let's multiply them together before multiplying i observe that this is first term minus ab this is first term plus ab oh so this is a plus b a minus b form yes so when we multiply them when we multiply them what will what will it become in the modulus you'll get first term squared minus second term squared this is b square a square minus b square cos square theta minus a square b square in the numerator in the denominator you have b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta over here this is what you have is that okay yes and one more thing in the numerator do you observe that b square is there in the first term b square is there in the second term we can take that b square common yes b square and modulus of b square is same as b square right in the bracket you get a square cos square theta in the modulus and minus b square cos square theta and this is minus a square this remains upon upon you have the same expression again this is b square cos square theta plus a square sin square theta okay where are we going with this oh huh. we have almost simplified this right just one more step remains and what is that okay this is b square cos square theta this is b cos square cos square theta our target is to finally get this b square right so these two terms should be exactly same yes do you observe a square cos square theta minus a square a square will come out common and cos square theta minus 1 cos square theta minus 1 will be minus of sin square theta and i can deal with that yes this is b square and this is modulus of minus a square sin square theta minus b square cos square theta once again the modulus will take care of this minus and we can write it as this this is b square cos square theta in the denominator plus a square sin square theta in the denominator over here please take care of this this will be minus a square sin square theta minus b square cos square theta the minus can come out common from this modulus without worrying about anything and this is what i'll be getting after this Okay, and these two terms are exactly same. Yes, these two terms are exactly same. Do you observe this is a perfect square? This is a perfect square. Adding them together will be a positive quantity. So modulus is no longer useful over here. And yes, this will be always positive. This will get cancelled with this. These two terms will get cancelled, and this will be b square only. So product of p1 and p2 is equal to b square. That is what we wanted to prove. Hence proved. Hence proved. Product of the lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the points this and this to the line this is b square. Or, or as I mentioned initially in the question, that this is a question based on properties of ellipse, right? So you can read it in another way that product of the lengths of perpendiculars drawn from the foci to any tangent of the ellipse is equal to square of semi-minor axis. That's what we have, right? That's the answer for this particular question. That's the complete proof of this particular question over here, right? This is 23rd question. Let's move on to the next one after this. The 24th question says a person standing at the junction, junction means a crossing of two straight paths represented by this and this. Okay, there are two lines 2x minus 3y, 3x plus 4y. Lines are not parallel, they are intersecting. Wants to reach the path whose equation is this, this in the least time. Okay, find equation of the path that you should follow. Oh, pretty simple. Uh, the person is standing at the junction of these two points, right? This is 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals 0. This is 3x plus 4y minus 5 equals 0. If you want, you can find this point P easily by the point of intersection, right? And wants to reach the path whose equation is this, right? The person wants to reach another path whose equation is this, right? Whose equation is 6x minus 7y plus 8 equals 0 in the least time. Now, if he has to... Uh, cover the distance and the least time the distance should be smaller right the smallest possible distance is this perpendicular distance so we are actually interested in this perpendicular distance not in the perpendicular distance exactly but we are actually interested in this equation equation of this point 
of this line PQ. We are actually interested in this equation of line PQ actually. So, the target is to find equation of PQ. Okay. And for that, first of all, we can find P. Okay. And next, we can find, we can find with the help of this slope, I can find the slope of perpendicular M of PQ. Right. If I find these two things, if finding equation will not be difficult, right? That's a process that is framed in the mind for finding the equation, right? So let's begin solving the question. This is, let us say, M of this particular line, M1 is equal to what? This is equal to coefficient of x upon coefficient of y with a minus, this becomes 7, 6 by 7. You can find that, right? 6x plus 8 equal to 7y divided by 7 and you get slope as 6 by 7. Okay, we have solved a lot of questions and I think this is, okay, M1 is equal to 6 by 7. So, M of PQ will be, since PQ is perpendicular, M of PQ will be equal to negative reciprocal of this, 7 by 6 times minus. Because PQ is perpendicular to this line, that's one thing. What about point P? If I can find point P, then life becomes very simple after that for finding equation of PQ. Point P is also simple. Point P is nothing but the intersection point of these two lines. What are these two lines? 2x minus 3y plus 4 equals 0 and 3x plus 4y minus 5 is equal to 0. This is equation number 1. This is equation number 2, let's say. And uh, for solving these, we have various approaches. We can apply cross multiplication or we can apply elimination. I would like to use elimination. Let's multiply this by 4 and this by 3. So, coefficient of y will become same, right? 4 times equation 1 plus 3 times equation 2 gives me 4 times this 12 and 3 times this becomes 12. So, 4 times 2 becomes 8, this becomes 9, which is 17x, okay? 4 times 1 becomes 16 and 3 times this minus 15 is equal to 0. This tells me x equals minus 1 by 17. So, x will be minus 1 by 17, that's what I'll be getting, right? The next thing is the other coordinate, that is y, and y can be found with this help, with the help of this or directly once again by some kind of elimination like this. I can multiply this by 3, this by 2. So, 3 times equation 1 minus 2 times equation 2. Okay, 3 times 2 is 6 minus this will get cancelled and what you will be remaining with is 3 times this 1 is minus 9y and minus 8, minus 9 minus 8 is minus 17y. What else? 3 times 1 is 4, 3, 12. And minus of minus 5 times 2 is 10 plus 10 is what I get equals 0. This tells me y equals 22 upon 17. Okay. We should also check this value. These values seem complicated. Let's check these values and put it in any equation and check. So 22 upon 17 minus 1 upon 17. Let's not worry about the denominator. Let's worry about the numerators only. So 2 times minus 1 is minus 2 minus 3 times 22. So that's minus 66 minus 2 is minus 68 minus 68 upon 17 is minus 4 plus 4 is 0. Okay, that's pretty cool. Similarly, minus 3 and 88. 88 minus 3 is 85. 85 upon 17 is 5 minus 5 is 0. So the point has been found correctly. This is point P, right? Point P is this. Once we have point P, which is minus 1 by 17 comma 22 by 17 and m of pq is equal to minus 7 by 6. So, we can find the equation after this. The equation will be y minus 22 by 17 is equal to slope minus 7 by 6 times x plus 1 by 17. This is what I will be getting. In the denominator, you have 6, you have 17, you have 17 and nothing. So, I will have to multiply by 6 times 17 throughout to take the LCM or I can multiply by 6 times 17. So, where does that take me? This is 6 times 17. Okay, 17 times 6 will be 102. So, this becomes 102y minus 6 times 22 is required. That will be equal to 132. And this is equal to, okay. So, I'll multiply, 6 is gone. I'll multiply by 17. 17 times 7 is 119. This is minus 119x. And uh, then you have, 7 as such and you have 17 as well. So, this is 17 times 7 in the minus and this is minus 7 actually. Right. So, this equation converts to what? This equation finally converts to 102y plus 119x. 119x plus 102y and is equal to 125 is what I observe. Right. This is the required equation of the path that he has to 
follow for minimum time. For the least time, he has to follow this particular path over here. That is the final answer for this question, question number 24th, as you can see behind me. That is question number 24th for us. With this, we come to the conclusion of this discussion of miscellaneous exercise in this session. And uh, yes, it was a pretty long exercise and we discussed some very interesting questions in this exercise over here from the chapter straight lines of NCRD class 11th. I hope you have enjoyed watching these solutions with us and you, have, you are learning a lot of new things over here. So keep watching this channel of your certification and if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel of your certification. Till the next session, all the best.